Server islands are a significant feature of Astro 5 and nobody is talking about them. With server islands, you can turn a choking page into a page that loads smooth with just one directive. I'll show you how to use it, how it works, and how it's different from how other frameworks do it. Let's get right into it. This is the example e-commerce application that we're working with. It's a very simple Astro 5 application that there's really no logic behind it. But this shopping cart section where we list out the items is loading rather slowly. So let's go take a look at why that is. So as we can see up at the top of this Astro component, we have an await where we await a new promise where we only resolve after setting a timeout for 3000 milliseconds or three seconds. So that's why we get that arbitrary delay. Now this is of course, trying to simulate a slow service that would give you back your cart list. Let's go see on the index page how we can add a single attribute that makes this a streaming load. So we zoom down to the section that includes the cart list. I can add on server defer, and that will defer the loading of the cart list. So the cart list will go off and start rendering itself. But meanwhile, the rest of the page will load. Let's go have a look. All right, we'll hit refresh. And as we can see, the entire page is laid out and then Popping right in is the shopping cart details once it's ready to go. That is a smooth experience, but it could be even smoother if we go in and add a skeleton. So inside of this cart list, I'm gonna bring in the cart skeleton component. Now that cart skeleton component is a skeleton, which means it's kind of a loading that kind of looks like the UI that might eventually arrive. It's got this kind of gliding pattern to it, but most importantly, we're gonna put it in the slot of fallback. And that fallback is a special slot meant specifically for these deferred components. And when it's there, Astro will use that in place of the eventual content, which would be the cart list. So let's go try it out. All right, let's re hit refresh. And as we can see, you got this pulsating skeleton and then boom, in comes the data. And that's kind of what folks have learned to expect in 2024 web apps. Now this is a pretty big example. So let's actually get to a smaller example and I'll show you how this is actually working behind the scenes. So this is a simple test application. All of this code is available to you for free in a link in the description right down below. Now the point of this application is to show the exact same thing we had, but with fewer tags. So we get a chance to really look into the HTML and see what's going on. So I'm gonna go put that to the side and we're gonna take a look at the two most important pages here in this workflow. On the left-hand side is our homepage. It brings in slow loader. It also sets pre-render to false. It basically sets it into server-side rendering mode. And then down on line 17, we've got our slow loader with that server defer that we added before. Of course, slow loader, which is over on the right, has that same await promise that we had before, this time five seconds, and just a simple tag inside there once it's ready to go. All right, let's give it a go. And we can see before slow loader, after slow loader, and then finally that slow loading component comes in. So let's go take a look at what's actually happening on the network side. All right, if we hit refresh, we can see that we get all of this network traffic and stay tuned, there'll be a, a five second, yep, there it is. So localhost here, that's the homepage, index.astro, and then down here in slow loader, that's the one that's taking five seconds to load. And once it gets there, then we've got our div with our slow loading component. So a good clue to how this is working is over in localhost in the HTML. So let's copy that out and bring that into our cursor. So we've got some Astro 5 preamble up here, but the most important thing is down in the script where we are going to fetch that server island. And then once we get the response back, we're gonna get the text from that. And then we're going to just swap it in to that space on the page. And Astro has automatically added that for us. And that's how these server islands are implemented. It's actually really cool, simple, and to the point. But it is different from how the Next.js app router does it. Let's go check that out. So the Next.js app router or React 18 and 19 version of how to do this type of functionality is called a suspense. And so I've got an example right here in Next Suspense, which does something very similar to what we did in Astro. So we can kind of see them side by side. Let's go take a look at the implementation. So here we have a simple page, got an H2 above and below a slow component. That slow component is a React server component that has a five second timeout, just like the other one, and it returns a div with slow component in it. Let's give it a try and see what it looks like. Now we can see that the page waits and waits and waits for that five seconds, and eventually you get your output. So how do we do the same thing that we were doing with the server defer? Well, what we do is we bring in suspense. 
and we wrap the slow component in a suspense. And it also has that fallback, just like we had with the slot in Astro 5. Here, it's an attribute on that suspense. Let's hit save again. And now if I hit refresh, we can see that the entire page is rendered and we get that loading segment and you get that before and after. And then finally we have the fill in. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how this runs over the network. So I'm gonna bring up Kitty, my terminal. I'll do curl localhost 3000. And then I'll do dash N and that's gonna put me into a streaming mode with curl. So we can see the output. And then after five seconds, we get the new output. And it's the React code on the client that takes care of taking the HTML there that says div slow component, slotting it into the right part on the page, and then also updating the React VDOM. The React VDOM is implemented using flight data right at the bottom of the payload. That's a React thing. It's got to update its VDOM on the page. Of course, Astro doesn't need to do that since Astro by default isn't running on the client. Now let's try the same curl with Astro. So instead of 3000, I'll use 4321. And we can see that the page comes back immediately. And then it's that JavaScript on the page that does the fetch and replaces the contents on the page with the new page contents coming in off of that fetch. This really demonstrates the big difference between the Astro approach and the Next.js approach. With the Astro approach, you get the page back right away and then it uses JavaScript to go off and do the subsequent load. Whereas with Next.js, they just keep the connection open until all of the suspenses resolve. Which one of those works in your use case? I don't know, but you need to know that there is a difference between those two approaches. One thing that's unique in the server islands case is that right at the bottom here, there's a section on an encryption key. It appears that the mechanism involved requires encryption between the client and the server. That's not required in the Next.js app router. It just keeps the connection open. So there's no need to do any subsequent kind of validation or encryption. Now, when I first heard about Astro 5 server islands, I thought they were trying to re-implement Vercel's partial pre-rendering. Unfortunately, they're not doing that. And there are, are some advantages to partial pre-rendering that you don't get with this approach. Let me discuss those as we take a look at the original server code that had the more elaborate e-commerce example. So we take a look at the index page here. Right at the top, we have a header. So this is a pretty standard e-commerce header. And the thing about e-commerce headers is they can often be content management system or CMS driven, meaning that all of the navigation items are stored in an external service that allows your product folks to go and make changes to the nav without actually having to make any changes to the code. It's really nice, but it does mean that you've got to make a request to that CMS in order to render that header. So I'm going to go in and add a delay that simulates that. So right up the top, I'll add another three second delay. And I'll bring that up and we can see that the entire page is stalled waiting on that header. Now, of course, we could do that defer. And now that means that the rest of the page will load really quickly. The only problem is that from an SEO perspective, your original payload for that nav, which is actually really important for SEO, isn't in that initial download. Now, on the Next.js side of the house, if we had a header here, and that header is really slow loading. Yes, without partial pre-rendering, that would be a problem. But with partial pre-rendering, what Next.js and Versal is going to do is it's going to go and serialize all of the div, the header, the H2 after it's been rendered, cache that off as a template for the page. And then only the things that are within suspenses will be rendered dynamically from the SSR. So the net result is with partial pre-rendering, that header will be cached and the page will be overall much faster. And of course, all of that header will be in the initial SSR load. So it's fine from an SEO purpose. All right, one last thing with this server island stuff. I wanted to show you how those work with React in Astro. So we got one more project here, Astro Islands Ecom React. So this is a React re-implementation of a portion of the page. To do that, I brought the React integration into Astro, and I've re-implemented the cart list as React. So we go over to your source. We can see that we have a new product component that takes a product, and then the cart list component that we had before brings in that product component, and then it simulates going off and doing a fetch, which would wait for, in this case, a thousand milliseconds to return that data. At the end, we then take that list of products, and then we use that product component to go and render them. So let's go see, does this work with this new defer? So we'll start off with the same cart list as before, but no defer, refresh, and we can see that it's blocking for that second. That's not great. If we add that defer, 
then we get the non-blocking behavior and the skeleton. So that's the beauty of Astro, regardless of the framework that you use for rendering components, be it solid, view, react, whatever you want, you can still use it and get this deferred behavior because Astro is doing the work of making that all work. Well, I hope you enjoyed this quick but thorough look into Astro 5's server islands. If you have any questions or comments, please put that in the comment section right down below. And hey, in the meantime, we have a new podcast, Front End Fire, where we discuss every week all of the new news in front end and full stack. Join me and my co-host TJ Van Toll and Paige Niederinghaus as we break down the week's news for you. Of course, in the meantime, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and you'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.